Cadillac's car lineup has been reduced to two all-new models. The compact size CT4, which I drove earlier this year, and this, the larger CT5. Both available in mid-performance grades, Cadillac refers to as V-Series. You really can't fault Cadillac for this strategy. All of its German rivals have been doing it for years. Give shoppers a taste of the summit at a price that's more medial. And when analyzed closely, the CT5 V-Series is actually more than just a nibble at performance. This car has a serious menu. With a twin-turbo V6, Magna-Ride suspension, Brembo front brakes, an electronic limited slip differential, V-Drive mode, performance traction management, and launch control, this V-Series injects enough raciness into the CT5 to satisfy all but the most demanding drivers. And for them, the Blackwing arrives next summer. At a cost of $2,000, this one is also equipped with all-wheel drive. Though with these standard summer use only tires, you'll need an additional set of rubber for the snow. It feels fairly sizable with nearly identical dimensions to the BMW 5 Series. That means real back seats and a trunk capable of family adventures, while the driver plays with the 360 horses and 405 pound-feet of torque from the 3-liter engine. A 10-speed auto handles the gear changes, while various drive modes are accessible via a somewhat inconvenient sequential switch, just four of the new age shifter. And the span of said modes is quite impressive, ranging from snow and ice to track, with an all-encompassing approach to chassis and powertrain adjustments. And if none of them perfectly fits, there's also the configurable My Mode and a more comprehensive V Mode, the latter activated by a switch on the steering wheel. And unlike the CT4V, this one has an exhaust system that makes some noise. Not necessarily lovable sounds, but they are selectable from stealth to snap, crackle, and pop. Regardless, there's always a constant burble, which turns into groaning at light load and then crescendos to something worth hearing at higher RPMs. Though I can't imagine it would be terribly fun based upon its size, weight, and less than willing transmission, Cadillac has equipped this CT5 to be driven on a track as long as you follow myriad procedures, lest you risk your safety and your warranty. For what it's worth, my best 0 to 60 time has been 5.2 seconds, which sounds about right. Caddy claims 4.9 for the rear wheel drive model. With active fuel management and start stop, gas mileage is rated at 20 mpg with a smallest driving range of 340 miles. Competitive driving mode, which is only available while in sport, is a handling mode where traction and stability control systems are killed. The limited slip allows for more rear wheel friskiness and the steering effort is increased. This is different, however, than performance traction management mode, which is only available while in the track setting. This includes five subsettings, depending on track conditions and driver skill level, to achieve the smoothest and most consistent corner exit. I've had the chance to experience this innovative programming in other GM models, and it's interesting to note that even the VET I recently tested didn't include it as standard, so chalk one up for the Caddy. Ditto for the magnetic ride control shocks, which are now up to version 4.0, though somehow don't feel quite as forgiving as before. The seats include adjustable side bolsters, but the CT5V never comes across as a car you necessarily take out for the sole purpose of driving for fun. I really like the effort here. It feels like a solid middle ground between the base 2.0-liter engine and the upcoming Blackwing model. But just like my CT4V test, it really hasn't been love at first drive. You have to actually push this car pretty hard before you can truly appreciate its performance benefits. Now its resume is solid. The pipes sound good, and I love the design, especially in this evergreen metallic paint. But if there's one attribute that interferes with true enjoyment, it's the steering. Now first off, the wheel is just too big. And secondly, it requires far too much effort regardless of drive mode. It gets tiring pretty quickly. And then to a lesser degree, the transmission can be slow to shift. 
particularly when using the paddles. Those are this car's bugaboos for sure and make the CT5 feel more like a lowercase v. As for the CT5V's role as a luxury sedan, it has some highs and lows. The beige black leather interior looks great. There's approach lighting and a neat opening animation. The touchscreen infotainment with navigation is loaded with apps and other useful info. The front seats have partial massage for the lumbar area and extendable thigh support. There are automatic heated and cooled seats and a heated steering wheel, performance gauges and time recorders, and a head-up display with customizable content. The safety alert seat and teen driver features are cool, and remote start is always a plus. But the Chevy Trailblazer I tested recently had adaptive cruise control and wireless CarPlay and Android Auto. So how is it this Cadillac doesn't? The former is available in a package, and the latter not at all. At 58305 as tested, the CT5 V-Series is significantly cheaper than a 540i X-Drive or E450 4Matic, but it pulls out of my driveway at the end of the week, leaving very few lasting impressions. For TestDriveNow.com, I'm Steve Hammes.